Hello, all you happy people. Now, I remember way back in 2016 watching Dan TDM playing the Alphas of Hello Neighbor, a game that had, at the time, suddenly blown up. And as I watched, I soon realized why. It was a pretty good game. It revolved around a very simple premise. Your neighbor is hiding something creepy in his basement, and it's your job to find out what it is. That simple premise, combined with the stealth, puzzling gameplay, slightly cartoony graphics, moody, shady lighting, and a self-learning AI that memorizes your every move, Dynamic Pixels, the devs of this game, had themselves a recipe for success. They even got a few game theories from MatPat himself. Everybody was hooked on these alphas at that time, waiting with bated breaths for a new one every couple of months, desperately trying to piece together the story the game was trying to tell, as well as what secrets were hidden in the basement. Everything was looking good. <sighs> Until it wasn't. I can't remember the year, but one Christmas, I'm guessing maybe 2019, I got Hello Neighbor for the Xbox One, and I was really excited. Despite the game releasing two years ago at the time, I'd never gotten to see what was in his basement. So, I got it and I played it, and it was completely broken. The game was completely different than what I'd saw previously. The neighbor, who was once a terrifying, clever, ever-present antagonist, was now a slow, stupid, minor inconvenience, and had a bad habit of getting stuck in his own car. The graphics were now over-the-top cartoony, making everything look like Dr. Seuss had a hand in the art direction. Even the creepy lighting had changed, switching out the incredible rich orange glow everything had in the alphas with a plain Roblox-like lighting system. And the puzzles. You know what, I'm sure we all know what the puzzles and platforming are in this Dumpster Survivor game are like, so I'll just scrap my thoughts on that. And the ending? What is the ending? Nothing we did in the past two chapters had any meaning whatsoever. Everything was just a dream. What was in the basement? So I had to look it up, and that's when I found out Hello Neighbor had books. Lots of them. And the lore was that he had locked his own son in the basement for his own protection. So poor Graham and Grandpa had forked over 30 bucks for an unplayable, unfun, broken, unscary hellhole of a game. A game that had its entire mystery solved in the first 20 minutes. What a letdown. I remember when it was speculated that the neighbor was performing some sort of satanic ritual in his basement. Maybe the basement was a portal to another world, other people said. Maybe he was a serial killer and hid his victims in the basement. But nope, he's actually just an overprotective dad. What a ripoff. In fact, looking through the wiki, I found out that the neighbor had 666 written on one of his shoes, implying that the devs clearly were thinking about the whole demonic ritual thing for the neighbor. So why didn't they? Uh, there's a lot to unpack about that question, so I'll get to that later. So after I beat the original Hello Neighbor, with help from a guide of course, looked up what other games there were in the franchise and thought, well, the devs probably learned from their mistakes in the first one. I bet these other games will be at least more bearable. <laughs> like that's ever gonna happen. Oh, I love it. Well, they aren't. Each Hello Neighbor game is rated worse than the last, and they all have the exact same problems. Bad storytelling, horrific bugs, nonsensical puzzles, all classic hallmarks of a Hello Neighbor game. It's almost sad. Reading through all these reviews and watching gameplay videos, and I think, do the developers even pay attention to the reviews at all? Do they even playtest their stuff? Do they just not care? So then I find out Hello Neighbor 2 is coming out. It's around May at this point, and I try to find some videos of the game. I do, and I'm actually impressed. Hello Neighbor 2 from the trailers was much bigger than the first, had more neighbors to no-clip into things, improved the original neighbor, supposedly. What actually caught me, the art style had changed. Still cartoony, but now everything looked old, uncared for. The textures all had grime on them, and I am ashamed to say that I had somewhat high hopes for the game. Maybe this time the devs would learn their lesson and knock everybody's socks off. In fact, I wanted to play that game for my channel, but I decided no when I saw the price, 50 bucks. I mean, I didn't believe in this game that much. So I watched the playthrough of it, and spoiler alert, it did not get better. Well, in some respects the game had improved, bugs weren't as common, and the puzzles were actually doable without a guide. But that's where the good stuff ends. This game is unfinished. It ends on a cliffhanger and says, see you later, we'll add more stuff lol, and the credits kick in. The game is missing around 90% of what was promised in previous builds, like having that one crow dude show up for a whopping of 3 seconds in the game, missing an entire second playable character. Like, holy crap, Dynamic Pixels, what are you thinking? And fix your stupid NPCs for the last time! 
For the most part, they just hobble along dumbly and are stupidly easy to get away from. This supposed advanced AI is slower than you and stops in its tracks every couple of seconds trying to think of what to do. Even then, doing stuff like jumping into the bathtub will make him forget you even exist. I mean, at least in the OG game, the neighbor could jump and stuff. These guys just stare at you and walk away. Oh, and don't even get me started on the three crap hole DLCs. Just like the rest of the game, they're unfinished, unpolished, broken, and definitely not worth your money. How, how dare you, Dynamic, for even considering making paid-for DLC for your crappy game. $50 crappy game, might I add, that lasts a total of two hours. So now we get into the big question. Why are the devs like this? Why are their games so terrible, but they don't do anything about it? Why do they do away with the incredible aesthetic and story the alphas had going on? Well, I mean, I don't really know about the first two questions. You'd have to ask the devs themselves that. But I can scrape together a morsel of an answer to the last one. The answer is very, very simple. Money. Oftentimes, devs will do as much as they can to lower the age ratings of their games, such as cutting out blood, or maybe just use less cur cursing in the scripts of the game. This makes the accessibility of the game wider. For example, let's take a look at Terraria. One of the many NPCs you can house is the Angler, who is a child. Each NPC can get killed, and Terraria is a very bloody game, so its developer, Relogic, had a problem on their hands. They just leave everything as is, they could get their game labeled Mature by ESERB, the age rating system for games, for including a minor's pretty gruesome death. This would limit the amount of people who play their games, since parents probably wouldn't get a mature rated game for their 11 year old at GameStop. So their solution was just make the angler disappear in a cloud of smoke when he died, along with the message the angler has left. You see what I mean? How a neighbor did away with their previously not very kid-friendly plot, instead made it intentionally vague and mysterious both to satisfy the parents and spark more theories by the community, making the game relevant for longer. This new kid-friendly branding also meant merch deals. And that's really, really sad. Everything this franchise does seems to be just for money. There doesn't seem to be any heart to the games. Everything is sleek and new on the outside, fancy graphics, new mechanics, but inside everything is just rotten and broken. And this seems to be the trend nowadays. Even franchises like Five Nights at Freddy's, which became famous in the first place for its gruesome and mysterious plot, has dumbed itself down for a younger target audience, which is honestly kind of a Will Smith to the face to the people who have actually invested their time and effort in the community and theories. <sighs> Hello Neighbor had a lot of missed potential. This game could have been great, mysterious, and could have delivered a satisfying ending. Instead, it bowed before the almighty dollar bill and destroyed their game for money and profit. That being said, this video's been going on for a while now. I've been writing the script for about an hour now, so I think I'll wrap up the video here. If you're still with me, thanks so much. Hardly anybody stays for longer than a couple of minutes on my videos. So you being here really makes me happy. And if you want more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and like the videos. It would really make my day. So yeah, thank you so much for being mad at the game with me, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye